Hey guys, this is Killerob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to talk about a few more UI things for the light campaign. And before we get into that, I'll give you a little status update of the light campaign. Things are going really well. We have cars selling in uh, the UE4 version of the game. So that means that we have engineering done, mostly. Uh, we have factory stuff done. So you can now set up factories and add-ons and they can start to produce and you can sign off the project and uh, start selling cars, progress time and so on and so forth. Unfortunately that is not something I can show you right here. Uh, it is working in Office but this is the Steam version, still the old build and uh, yeah so uh, currently we're cheating a little bit. It's not that fully done because we are selling the cars without engines. <laughs> That's that's not something you want to find out that your the new car you bought is is coming without an engine, but uh, that is what we are going to hook up next, and then we polish up the UI, and once that is done, it is time for open beta phase for the campaign, um, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the UI that is required for all that to happen, and I'm going to do this outside of the game because these drafts are done in InDesign, Adobe InDesign. And uh, a lot of it is being straight up ported over to the uh, designs you will see in the game, UI stuff you will see in automation. All right, let's head over there. Okay, let's start our random assortment of UI stuff uh, discussion with the campaign setup screen. And well, this map is just, and these arrows too, this is just a background picture I chose. This would be the, the world map you see here without these blocky things on it. This is also remnants from the past. Um, ignore that, just look at the UI and also ignore that these are all the same icons. Um, once again, you will be able to choose Company Tech Pool to start out with. Um, this will be um, a constant throughout the uh, light campaign until we have either something more in depth or have decided on that this is actually a pretty cool system. So far it has been working. So um, why not take this into light campaign B3? So this would be the various sections you can um, put your tech points into and that would cost you points which lower your difficulty rating. And there are a few more things in here that are new and uh, that would be, well new or missing, you will no longer be able to set the competition's affordability rating but rather only their competitiveness in desirability. So you can give them a penalty, um, keep them at exactly fair game, or uh, make them a little stronger. You can choose your starting cash, but what is new here? Oh, this is actually... No, this is the, the new layout, yes, okay. Um, you can choose your starting plot size for car and engine factory, as well as your starting uh, engine factory size and car factory size. Um, this would be L1 is well, large 1 and M3 is uh, medium 3. That, that's just an example. So you no longer start with completely empty hands unless you want to. You can set those down to nothing. So uh, that would give you a... <laughs> you could even start with like zero cash and then just take out a big loan and start with the tiny car factory you built from scratch. That should be possible and well I, we, we don't guarantee success but <laughs> that will be possible um, so engineers they won't be part of light campaign v3 um, but they will make their way back into it very soon thereafter it is not a super necessary feature to run the campaign and we want to get the campaign out to you as quickly as possible and that is why we are leaving them out for now but uh, they were not necessary to play the light campaign v2 either and we want to implement them properly um, once we get around to it which will be for light campaign v4 and okay so you can select your cash reserves your competition these will be sliders of course and then a new setting will be more uh, more market mo volatility the market volatility uh, or market volatility also known as that um, you can set from low to high and those of you who uh, would like to have an easier game uh, of course set it to low 
less massive crashes right when you <laughs> when you release your super luxury models. Yeah, that would be fine, wouldn't it? Um, again, you have your your difficulty ratings by uh, section being displayed and an overall score multiplier and a difficulty rating overall in text spelled out for you. You can choose your company name and your starting year and when you click around on the uh, main map to select your starting region you also get a little bit of info on your plot on the plot costs on average on the worker skill levels the economic size the year over year growth currently and how much salaries uh, the average worker in this country expects okay so far so good let's go to the next um draft oh this will be a very quick one well i think it makes sense as uh, soon as you know what this is supposed to be uh, again ignore these boxes with X's and check marks in them. They are not supposed to be shown here. Um, but everything else is about ish right. So when you're on the. When, when you set up your first factory, if you make a new factory, or you would buy want to buy a new plot even, this would be the first thing you see. This is the plot uh, buy menu. And you click a country. Which highlights and then you get its stats and you can then select which plot you would want to buy and this is not a dollar icon for a good reason because you would only buy this thing once you sign off this project because otherwise you could end up in the situation where you have bought the plot but then decide to cancel the project and you still have the plot like cancel the project while it's still in design that would be a, a bummer, like, oh, I just spent 377 million on a plot I'm not using. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, also, this gives you a quick overview of the factories, the number of factories you have in the regions. And this is this, like, compact view, which you then can expand, and it shows you car factories and engine factories, the plot sizes and the current factory size on top of it. One thing that is missing in here is a button to get... Uh, forward or backward um, to the next tab or out of it again well out of it there's an X up here but yeah oh this one this one is nice of course yes 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 uh, this is the uh, second factory tab so the the previous one we just looked at is the first factory tab in the last video we already have talked about the third factory tab uh, where you can set production settings and so on like priorities and and all that good jazz but here you have your factory and good news in game already these factories and sizes load in dynamically and it's more or less instant uh, instantaneous what you would do here is to uh, either upgrade your factory or leave it at what it is but also you determine what processes you are going to use like if you want to uh, um, add steel presses aluminum presses to speed things up well you have to have steel presses for whatever car project is in here and that's why that is why it is red the game doesn't just select these things automatically for you because these are very expensive things and we want you to make the conscious decision oh shit i have made a choice before that makes steel presses a requirement yes and uh, then you have various different add-ons and facilities, bonus facilities that give you some other benefits you can put on here. Every plot right now will have five slots. Over time, I think in later versions of the game, we will have different number of slots available for add-ons. Uh, currently, it will be five always. But uh, I think it makes sense that a smallish factory only has like three potential slots in there we can uh, build add-ons so that it has to be a small factory will have to be more specialized at what it does than a huge factory which will be yeah we'll have all kinds of, of stuff going on um, and then we have a nice little overview here and with summary some some data but nice little overview here over your production flags the production flags are the ones that you d uh, discover in the designers that tell you limited production and no mass production. And these flags can be changed by some of the processes and add-ons. Some things like treated steel add-on is required in order to make treated steel stuff because you need 
a lot of different baths and all that that jazz like 30 steps of treatment or something crazy and this would be only available to large factories um, but let's take for example aluminium presses so you know that you have uh, hand built alloy panels in the 1940s already available to you and it is actually steel presses that is more difficult to get like steel panels are more difficult to get in the uh, in the 40s than full alloy because you can always take out your hammer and some wooden shapes and hammer the alloy panels into into place and that is the very basic handmade process but you might want to at some point upgrade to aluminium presses and this would then go from red which is no mass production like hand built it would then go to green which makes it um, or li is is it first limited production maybe there are three steps in there even but uh, anyway so you can change some of these production flags another good example is in here is the level works so if you select handmade interior or luxury interior then those things come with a limited production flag and a no mass production flag you can get rid of that flag the limited production flag by adding a leatherworks add-on so a dedicated leatherworks workshop where they only where they make stuff um, the detailing for your cars and everything for the interior for you and that removes one step of the flag for the no mass production flag that would be red in here it would then drop down to a yellow flag if you select the level works add-on I think overall that makes a lot of sense and plays well but we will see about uh, about that once you get your your filthy little hands on it um, factory changes this is basically just a list of your changes you have done to the factory compared to its last run and you will see the what is being removed size medium 2 is being removed and you build a size large one on top of it what it costs and how long it takes overall i think this ui is pretty pretty good self-explanatory has some nice fluff going on here because what we're going to do this will be awesome uh, is that it's not going to be just a static image like you see here but rather because it's a full 3d scene we will have the camera flying around very slowly so that you can again get a little bit of grasp of scale and stuff that i think this will look really nice and once you have selected all the items you need to select in order to advance this button will unlock the red warning would disappear and you can continue uh, to what tab we had a look at in the last little dev update so the final one i want to talk about Ooh, this this is a really good one this is a really good one last time we talked about the final overview summary tab right and that was a lot of data and one of the most horrendous data tables was the forecast and now I've made it such that that forecasting table you know from last time will be slightly simplified and that is because now we have a forecasting tab where you not only do some kind of forecasting and prognosis for uh, how this car will sell but also you will set um, the shift numbers uh, a range of shift numbers and you set your um, a rough production estimate with a, uh, the default for the production numbers that production splits being set by your priorities you have uh, set in your factory setup um, but also you set your markups or you set your fixed pricing this is all in here for every trim you have so what does this do oh it's so much color we are not used to so much color in automation yes not in the UI it's all red and gray but um, I think color kind of fits here so your forecasting options are the following here you have how well the overall economy will be doing or at least how how you forecast it to be doing what comes out of it of course is independent of that then you can choose how well you think your cars will be holding up in the market how quickly your competitors will try to counter you so uh, if you set it higher then you think your cars will be doing uh, will not decline in competitiveness quite as fast as the usual and then you have 
a setting for how much target market awareness you are going to have, how that will develop over the next few years when these cars are being sold. So if you set it to zero, then you assume that, oh, it will probably be just a, a very, very static where you are right now thing. And a plus two would mean that, okay, your market awareness will increase quite a lot compared to what it is right now. Well, minus two means like no one knows about you anymore. Um, <clears throat> so that will help or not help, depending on how much marketing you will be doing. One of the most important settings in here is this one, the break-even point. There is no way to really say how much margin you are putting on your cars. Because the only thing you can determine is how much margin you are going to have at a certain point after having sold a certain number of cars. Once you have determined what kind of break-even point you want to have, in this case it would be three years worth of production. At three years worth of production at a certain markup, you will have broken even with all the other costs you have. And the, uh, these costs are all listed here. Factory build costs, you have the engineering costs, you have the production costs, including the uh, average cost for materials per car and the labor. You have the factory tooling, you have the bank loan you're paying back, or rather the interest payments on that. And you have the sales price here for the car on average and you have the resulting margin from it and the number of cars you have sold. We've gone through this mostly in the last episode already uh, in the last little dev update where I went through this on the uh, final testing tab or not final testing tab rather the, uh, the sign off screen where it's a uh, summary. And um, yeah with this you will be able to determine a uh, a certain markup for your cars which will be the 0% rating over here and then you can slap on some more percent of markup um, or just set your price manually as well if you want to and that will influence how your projected sales and how your profits and um, revenue looks like over the years and this thing should also be pretty useful. It shows how well the trims will be doing according to your settings here in the markets. That gives you a rough indication for when you want to facelift really. Oh, can be very useful. Also, if you see that oh, maybe um, my, my cars, my super nice premium car I have in there which shouldn't be selling that much, maybe Maybe put down the percentage a bit so that not as quite as many are being produced. This column gives you at the current settings you have here for the minimum, maximum target shifts, gives you the number of cars you produce or produce of each trim per month. And of course, there will be a lot of good graph data down here, which should tell you more about how your cells are going. And uh, yeah, I think this 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 will probably be. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this real quick. So far in the light campaign, in the light campaign V2, automation has basically only been a car making game where all the skill was in making good cars. But I think this here will be part of a big new skill for, for people to learn, for players to learn. And that is to make accurate forecasting and really hammer down setting the pricing because that is that is probably not something that comes supernatural to uh, to the players who have just been building cars um, but it is something that a ty good tycoon game requires that there is actual skill in making business decisions and I think this tab even though it's very much linked to the cars and their production themselves is the right way of doing it it is still very much focused on the product, but you have to have a bit of business thinking in here while making your prognosis so that you don't end up with massive losses or just no car sales and yeah, like massive stock levels. Also what this is pointing to is something that we have decided on making a lot more user friendly. What we want to do in the light campaign V3 is get rid of most of the annoying micromanagement of like you every month you go into your production screen and change the number of shifts and change your pricing all that will now be done 
by an AI where you only set the parameters. You set the target shifts, you set the minimum shifts it's allowed to choose and the maximum shifts. And you can set the maximum amount of, or rather, well, the minimum amount of um, markup for your cars. In that way, the only time you need to micromanage or reassess the situation is when the AI warns you that, oh, this month, by the way, I couldn't quite make it with the parameters you've given me. So please check up on the values. And I think that with the overall much better overview in the hub screen will make the campaign play like a proper tycoon game without the nasty amount of micromanagement that the light campaign v2 had. And with that, I think it's a good point to wrap up. And I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. <laughs>